Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a very nice exponential equations. Exponential equations are fun and this one is particularly fun to solve. Uh, we're going to talk about some interesting facts towards the end. Let's get to work. I'm also going to show you a graph, I think, if I did not forget to include it. Sometimes I do forget. Anyways, we have this equation 4 to the power x equals the quantity 2x to the power 32. Okay, so 2x is in parentheses, that's why I call that a quantity. And now we're going to be solving for x. I'll be presenting mm, a couple different methods. We'll talk about a special function and also some interesting powers that we'll talk about. Okay, anyways, let's get to work without giving away too much information. Now, first method is going to look at this as like a ratio or maybe... In other words, put the x's on the same side. That's what I'm trying to say. So let's go ahead and expand this. We can write it as 2 to the power 32. You know that the power will distribute. And then I want to bring the x over here so that all the x's are on one side. That's usually the general approach. Unless you have something else, you might have a better idea. Uh, because I tried something else, it didn't work. Anyways, it doesn't matter because I have uh, methods that work. So now what do we do with this? We have this quotient, but we can't simplify it because uh, the top is an exponential function, the bottom is a polynomial. There are different things. But one thing I can do is maybe um, kind of like I come up with a hypothesis like, okay, in order for this to be true, and this is, uh, I believe, a competition t level problem. It, it's probably appropriate for math competitions. So I would guess that if there's a good solution, then we can find it. Okay. I don't know what it meant, but so here's what I'm trying to say. The right hand side is a power of 2, 4 to the power x is a power of 2, so my guess is x to the power 32 should also be a power of 2. I'm not talking about the exponent, I know 32 is a power of 2, but I want x to be a power of 2. So, for that reason, I want to call substitution. Hey, substitution, come over here. Substitution is awesome, I use, I use it all the time, so I'm going to call x 2 to the power n. Now, in this case, n does not have to be an integer. It could be a, a rational number, but I'm hoping that it's an integer. Okay, that's my hope. So what does this entail? Let's go ahead and replace x with 2 to the power n. So we have 4 to the power x, which is 4 to the power 2 to the power n, and then x will be 2 to the power n, and then we're going to raise it to the power 32, so it's going to be 2 to the power 32n, and that's 2 to the power 32. Very interesting that these 32s come together, right? So let's do the following. I want to go ahead and actually here uh, not cross multiply because don't be fooled by the 32s because you still want to keep those n's together. They're variables. Okay, they get along well. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to write this as 2 to the second power and then 2 to the second to the 2 to the n. That's just going to be 2 to the power 2 times 2 to the n. This is 2 to the first. It's going to be 2 to the power 2 to the power 1 plus n. Or you can write it as n plus 1. doesn't matter. No big deal. Great. What do you do with this? Well, it's going to replace the numerator, and then you have this. So you're going to have now 2 to the power 2 to the power 1 plus n. Uh-oh, what's going on? Come on, notability. Don't do this. 2 to the power 2 to the power 1 plus n divided by... 2 to the power 32n equals 2 to the power 32. Now, everything is a power of 2. Don't you love that? It's beautiful. Now we can go ahead and use the properties of exponents. We're supposed to subtract these exponents, right? That's going to give us, remember, be careful. Don't take 1 plus n because 2 to the power 1 plus n is the exponent. So 2 to the power 1 plus n minus 32n equals minus 32n equals 32 because that's also the exponent. Get the idea? Division turns the exponents uh, into a difference. So we have this interesting equation. I know this equation is not easily solvable, but now I think we can use the 32. Let's put this on the right hand side because these two get along well now. Okay. What am I going to do? Factor. Let me, let me write this as uh, 2 to the power n plus 1 because that kind of bugs me. It's just the OCD with numbers and expressions. And now I have this interesting expression. One of the things that's really nice about this is the presence of n plus 1. So again, this calls for substitution. I mean, what can I do? I can't avoid it, right? Let's go ahead and call this k. 
Now this is also k, so we get 2 to the k equals 32k. Beautiful. Obviously this equation is a lot easier to solve by guessing than the original one because you'll see what I'm talking about in a little bit, okay? Just give me some time to figure this out. So now we have an interesting equation and my idea here is not to bring the twos together, I mean not to bring the k's together, but bring the 2 to the k and 32. Because 32 is a power of 2, isn't that amazing? Now we can write this as 2 to the 5th and then divide by 2 to the 5th and that's going to give us from subtraction of exponents 2 to the power k minus 5 equals k. Beautiful. Now I really turned this into something nice and easy to guess, right? Well, can't you guess at this point? <laughs> okay, so here's the interesting part. We keep getting, okay, k, we got an x, and then we said, okay, x is going to be a power of 2, we called it 2 to the n. And now we got something like uh, n plus 1, we called it k, and then k just happens to be a power of 2, because left-hand side is a power of 2. Isn't that interesting? A lot of powers of 2. So I'm just going to test powers of 2. If k is equal to 2, this won't be satisfied, because, uh, because the left-hand side is just going to be less than 1. This, no, this doesn't work. k equals 4, you don't need to test 3. Uh, is not going to work, and k equals 8 is actually going to work because 2 to the 3rd equals k, 8, right? <laughs> k, k8. So k equals 8 works, beautiful, that means we got a solution. Is any other power going to work? No, because 2 to the k is just going to grow much faster, uh, outpacing uh, k, obviously, a polynomial. So now what do we get? k equals 8, but k is n plus 1. If n plus 1 is equal to 8, that means n is equal to 7. We're not looking for n, we're looking for x. x equals 2 to the power n. Since n is 7, x will be 2 to the power 7, and 2 to the power 7 is 128. Memorize the powers of 2. I just memorized all the way up to 2 to the 10th, and the rest you can kind of multiply, right? Kind of like 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192, so on and so forth. Not too hard to do. So, x equals 128. Would you, were you expecting that? Yes, it's a power of 2 but a very, very large power of 2. Let me go ahead and plug it in and see what that means. Okay, if x is equal to 128, I'm going to get one, 4 to the power 128 is equal to 256 to the power 32. Is this true? <laughs> Take a look. This is 2 to the power 2, so it's going to be 2 to the power 256, and then 256 is 2 to the 8th, 2 to the power 32, 8 times 32 is 2 to the power 256, because this is 2 to the 3rd, this is 2 to the 5th, the product is 2 to the 8th, which is 256, and yes, we have an equation, therefore x equals 128 is a solution, and it's the only solution as far as I know. Or maybe there are more solutions, probably. But anyways, this is the most important one. And let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative real quick. Maybe I'll just give you some ideas and you can do the rest. All right? So here's what I thought about, which didn't turn out to be a nice thing, but you can work it out probably. I kind of thought about this as 2 to the second uh, to the x. So it's 2 to the 2x. And then I realized, uh-oh, 2x appears twice. So why not I call this u, okay? So then we get 2 to the u equals u to the 32, and then I could probably put these two together, can't I? Why don't we just go ahead and put uh, 2 to the power negative 2, multiply by that on both sides, and we're going to get this. So my goal is to use Lambert's W function. And you know how that works? If you get something like t to the t and apply Lambert's W, you're going to get t from here. So my goal is to get something uh, that looks like it. Can I get it from here? That's a good question. And I would probably just raise both sides. Should I raise both sides to the power 32? I don't think so. I should probably take the 32nd root on both sides. And then that should give me u times 2 to the power negative u over 32. But guess what? That can be worked out. Should I consider negative 1? I don't think so if you're dealing with real solutions. But here's my thinking. Multiply both sides by negative 1 over 32. And you're almost there. I think we're going to have to multiply by something else too, but that's okay. Now replace uh, 2 with e to the power ln 2, and then you're going to get this. And then finally multiply by ln 2, and from here by using Lambert's W function, you should be able to get the solution. But you're going to get something nice, maybe. That's just give it a try. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Oh, I was going to show you the graph, wasn't I? Yes. Here we go. Here's the graph, and, you know, looks like there's more solutions. How do we find them? 
Lambert's W function. Bye-bye.